Welcome to the Fishbowl Radio, everybody. My name is Chief here, and joining me today is Jalen. We're doing our Louisiana Raging Cajun baseball preview and softball preview for the upcoming week here, as we do every single week here. Keeping track of RPI and see where all the teams are at here. Um, the Cajuns have lost in the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. Men's basketball and women's basketball both fall in their respective games. So, um, Jalen, they couldn't get it done on the court here. So, is there anything to take away from both men's basketball and women's basketball for this uh, season? Hey, thanks, Chief. I think when it comes to uh, the women's basketball team, I want to start with, I mean, the fact that they actually made it to the semifinals, to go up against uh James Madison James uh Madison team that they lost by to uh ten points. I think it's impressive. I mean, the year that the Cadens have had up and down dealing with injuries, uh talking about uh going on these runs and then they would lose games and win games. It's been an up and down season all year and I think that upsetting like a team like Troy and then making it to the semifinals and only losing by ten points or less. I'm not gonna say they had a great season, but it was a it was a Good, but bad season at the same time, if that makes sense. But ultimately, I mean, they had a shot to make it to the championship game. And who knows what would happen if they would have made it there. And as far as the men's uh, basketball team goes, I know they can score the ball with anybody, but if they were cold, not making any shots, it's like the team couldn't, couldn't win. They went on a losing streak to kind of end the regular season. They did get their last win against Southern Miss, but then they went up against the Arkansas State team in the quarterfinals that were just – Outmanned them, outplayed them, and they beat them by, I think it was like 17 points. So the men had a great season, too, with a lot of young guys that are on the team this year. A lot of those players, the starters, will come back next year, get more minutes, get more reps, and we'll see what the Cajuns men's team could do next year. Yeah, we'll see how the transfer portal treats them as well during the offseason here. Um, there was some drama with Demas Folks toward the end of the year. Like, he was, like, not being seen around the team for a while. That'll be a situation we're going to monitor. He'll probably end up transferring out if I had to take an educated guess, but that's because that's the way the college athletics is so far. So, I mean, for them to get to the semis, the women's basketball team, and for the men to make it to the quarters, I mean, the men, I'm a little bit disappointed in them. I felt they relied too much on a three the three ball this year, which didn't, you know, made them lose some games, made them win some games too. Double-edged sword if you're going to look at it that way. But, you know, Jordan Brown leaving hurt the team, obviously. And, you know, uh, it – it's going to be interesting to see how all this plays out over the course of the next couple of like seasons with them and stuff like that. So um, I know that the the fan base wants uh, coach Marlin gone, but I mean, it's kind of hard for somebody to get rid of somebody when they've been like, they won a Sunbelt championship last year in a tournament and made the NCAA tournament last year. And it, he's not going anywhere until they can find a way like, to ha make him have like multiple losing seasons, like four or five years in a row. If you like, because like I said, like two years ago, I felt he was on the hot seat. And then he made that run and made it to the finals. They lost in that finals, but they still like, because they were underwhelmed, they underwhelmed a lot that year and people were kind of questioning it. Then that in 2022, 20, 23 season, they made it to the, the championship game again in the tournament. And they ended up winning. So he's playing well against his peers, basically, is what I'm trying to say. He's basically gotten like he's went to two finals in the last three years of the Sun Belt, and he's won one out of two this year. They didn't quite have enough to get back over there. It's the hardest thing to do in sports. I always said is repeat. I'm not being an apologist for Coach Marlin. I'm just stating the facts of what actually happened and what transpired out there on the court. But um, you know, they they did a very good job, uh, like last year getting to the championship and then winning here. But you know, last year they had they went through that same thing where they lost a lot of games toward the end, kind of replicated the same thing this year, not able to get past. But this year they couldn't get past the quarterfinals. And I think if they would have had, you know, they had some injuries, it help it it hurts the team whenever you get um cold like that toward the end of the year. And this basketball is one of those sports where. If you're hot, you're hot. You'll start getting on these big runs and start running toward the tournament final. Like, look what Arkansas State did, basically. I mean, they, they got hot at the right time, made it to the finals, because the Cajuns were competing with Arkansas State for that number four seed when we got toward the end of the season. So, and a lot of people yep. tend to forget that for the Cajuns went on the losing streak. But they were there. They had a shot. They just couldn't close it out. So, we'll see. I think overall, I think it was an all right year. I'm 
a little disappointed. I thought they should have finished in the top four. So, but I mean, we'll see what happens next year and see how it goes. Now, um, that's the women's team. I was shocked they made it to the semis, given how bad their season was, like during the regular season, and how like because they had injuries too, and like they they really impressed me with their like never give up attitude and they, them keep fighting the upset against Troy. No one expected that there. I thought Troy was gonna make that last shot, but then the buzzer came and you know they missed it and it was a advance to the semis there. But I think that 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 team has a lot moving forward to kind of look forward to. It's going to be one of those that's going to be interesting to watch. I'm excited what Gary Brawlhead's going to do for the Raging Cajun women's basketball team in the future because I think there might be some good things coming up with that team in the future. So we'll have to keep an eye on them and see how well they do. I know this year might not have been the year, but it's something we're going to keep looking forward to as we go progress further on along this uh, season. But, you know, congrats to the successes of the men and the women's basketball program. And just continue going on here. So, but just looking ahead here, I don't know where men's basketball is really going. You know, it's kind of interesting to see what they're going to do uh, a year after being removed from the championship here. So, it's going to be one of those here. We'll see how they do. I like keeping things on a four-year basis when I'm evaluating people and stuff. Like, if I was an AD, would I get rid of this coach or this coach? I like doing four to five years to kind of see how your coaches do here. I know everybody wants instant gratification with the transfer portal, but there's a reason why they're in the transfer portal. They got beat out by a spot. They want to go to lesser competition to get playing time, which I get it. You know, it's about building your own name and your brand and stuff like that. So it's, uh, you know, it's a double-edged sword when it comes to that kind of thing. So um, the transfer portal has really changed college athletics all across the board. And it's going to be here. We're going to figure out how to deal with it as a smaller G5 school. So we either figure it out or we just, you know, fall back into oblivion basically. So, um, but we'll, we'll see how it goes here. Now college baseball, it's got impacted by, by the power five schools, but not as much for G5 schools. Cause you know, they want to be at that school and stuff. Well, the Cajuns picked up a series win over Tulane. They had a midweek win against Northwestern state this past weekend. Here, Cajuns lost eight to eleven against Tulane. They gave that one away late in that game. Here, they gave up from the seventh to the ninth inning. You're gonna be kind of shocked by this because the Cajuns were beating the daylights out of Tulane. Here, they're beating them eight to two. Tulane ends up scoring nine runs in the last three innings to end up winning that game. They committed three errors. The Cajuns committed two errors. Tulane's RPI. It's 86 right now. They're 10 and they're 10 and 6 with the series being played here. So they lost to the Saturday game winning the extras. So, like we said, the Cajuns pitching here has been striking them lights out basically for a lot of the season here. So it is good to see. I think the Cajuns do have a little bit better pitching here this year, but at times they give up a lot of runs. So that's kind of something to kind of keep an eye on and see what's going on here. So, Jalen, what you thought about this previous uh series against Tulane with the Cajuns? Uh, honestly, I think the Cajuns should have swept the series. I mean, the first game against Tulane, uh, like you said, they were up by a lot, and they should have won that one. The second game, they took care of business uh, against Tulane. And the third game, the more interesting one, is when uh, Kyle DeBarge hit that game-winning uh, home run in the uh, ninth inning, and you all said, yep, victory is ours. So and they took the series. So I think it was, um, I think it was a great experience uh, for the Cajuns to not only go against an uh, in-state competition team, but somebody from a different conference. And I think it'll kind of help them kind of build up some momentum as we get through. Uh, we're at the what the midway, midway point of March. Um, the team is still trying to figure out themselves, still trying to figure out some lineups. Um, Matt Deggs is still trying to figure out everything with his team. I think they're, I think they're playing pretty good ball right now. I just need to keep it up. So, Trey LaFleur has been batting very well for the Cajuns so far this year. He was definitely uh, – so, during Saturday's game – he had five at-bats, two hits, two runs, two RBIs. He's been basically the best uh, hitter for the Cajuns so far this year. Uh, even with Kyle DeBarge being named the preseason as uh, some belt player of the year here. But he had a good series himself. Like you said, the game-winning home run. So Kyle DeBarge is definitely coming around. That'll be interesting to see how he does here 
as we go further along to see Jack Martinez, you know, he was he was the starter on Saturday. And look, <clears throat> just based on what happened on Friday, I, I kind of want to touch on Friday a little bit here. We'll go look at the stats here a little bit here that will kind of give you all an ex explanation of what's going on here. Um, The Cajuns, like, back in that series, like, Back in that series, like we like you know the big tough schedule games that the LSU, the Texas, they held their own. So, look like they uh the Houston's, yeah Houston, yeah like that whole tournament there really tested the Cajuns. I think they pretty much proved that they can handle these kind of teams. They can hang with them. So that's something to be kind of uh looking forward to as we go along this year here, like as we get in the regional play and stuff like that. So um, it's going to be one of those that you'll find out how deep of a bullpen you have. And once you get deep in that bullpen, these guys will be tested. And I think they handled the test very well during that, uh, that weekend here. So it was just crazy here. So when the game started, they had a 30 minute rain delay and you know, they, I thought it was kind of a poor game management kind of thing there too to let the Cajun pitcher kind of pitch like the first couple of like pitches and then like just pull them out because in baseball it's really hard to get back in the rhythm once you start pitching and stuff. You're just trying to get back in there. So it was a, you know, he, it was just one of those things that it was like 30 minute rain delay. So out literally after the second batter. So. It was just crazy though. I, I thought it was bad, and should have been a little bit better up managed from the umpire standpoint. But you know, they still they still should have won that game. I gave it away toward the end. So there you go. Um, Hunter Higgs had a good Friday night. He had a triple, two RBIs, called the bars had a double. He had to run himself. So yeah, like the Cajuns do very good at like batting. They have a very good batting team so far this year. Um from what I can tell. So it's going to depend on how hot the bats get, but typically with a coach Dex team what I've noticed over several years as temperature gets hotter. I remember him saying this at one of the press conferences and it was a uh, very interesting to like listen in and kind of, that kind of thing. He says it's easier to get when the temperature is warm because the you know, like, he brought a little bit of uh, I didn't think about it like this, and I've played baseball before, that, uh, like, a cold, like, a hot air rises, cold air sinks, like, hot air balloons, basically. The balls go further out because the air is hotter. And I was wondering, like, yeah, I, can see that, that. I was like, that kind of makes sense. It was like, like, it was like doing, like, uh, like some science into it. I'm like, man, bro, that's that's like that's some out the box thinking that kind of way. You know, like when you're thinking about baseball, you just think, oh, let's put the bat to the ball. You don't think about like the elements and stuff. Like we know when control is where the baseball is gonna go in that kind of thing. But same thing with softball, I bet. I bet, I bet it's kind of the same kind of principle there too. Now there's a different technique to batting with softball compared to baseball, obviously. I've never played a uh only like some rec league or like uh, alumni tournament kind of thing for softball, but um, yeah, like there's different techniques for that kind of thing. So I thought that was an interesting point that he tried making about like the hot air rising and the cold air sinking affecting the baseball and that kind of thing. You'll see more home runs toward the end of the year. I think I think there's a combination of it though too. Basically, like um, you know, you have more practice at the ball, contact hitting being able to, you know, hit the gaps, control, back control, figuring out, like, left center, right center, that kind of thing. So, yeah, it'll be uh, interesting to see what the Cajuns do in these next couple of games, though. But, um, so, Cajuns do have a midweek game against, on the road, and Ruston against Louisiana Tech. Louisiana Tech is having a 13-3 and year. Then they have a three-game series on the road, in Jonesboro, Arkansas against Crystal State, who is also 11 and 5 with an RPI of 173. Now, let's look at Louisiana Tech. Right now, they have a higher RPI than the Cajuns do right now. 
but their strength of schedule is one seventy one. They've only they've played North Northern Cal Colorado for four games. Who hasn't won a game yet? They played Kent State, McNeese, Army, Creighton, and uh, Air Force. Xavier. They've lost two two or three games in Southern Miss. Um, Northwestern State. They played them in a midweek and they played occasion. So they do have a higher RPI, but their schedule is not as glamorous to look at if you're looking at it that way. Cajun strength of schedule is a little bit higher. They're at 99 right now. They're a little bit under 100. So Cajuns do have some top 10 teams they played against like Vanderbilt and LSU. So look at it from that standpoint. I think Cajuns beat Louisiana Tech in the midweek game. Now, whereas Arkansas State here, we know Sun Belt's a little bit better baseball conference than anything else here. Arkansas State, they have a 258 strength of schedule so far. They played Omaha, Arkansas Pine Bluff, at Ole Miss, Lindenwood, Central Arkansas, Missouri State, which they lost two or three against Missouri State, but Missouri State has a RPI of 11 right now, which, like I said, it's a little too early to really talk about RPI too much. Like I mentioned many of uh, previous weeks, not till April or May, you really want to start paying attention to it to see where you're at, but they had a 23 win against Eastern Illinois. They won that series two or three in that one. But I do think I think the Cajuns win this series. I think they'll take two or three against uh Tulane and be able to advance forward here and just kind of like see what's going on there. So um I I I got them winning some uh games here, really putting themselves in I think Cajun pitching is gonna be a big difference when we get into regional play this year. If they can keep it up and, you know, keep striking guys out because if they can just get those middle relievers and avoid these like late games where they'll get like bunch of runs late it'll be something to kind of think about what you think of Jalen yeah absolutely Chief I think the Cajuns will ultimately uh beat Louisiana Tech I think also they'll win two or three against uh Arkansas State going into Sunbelt play like you said bigger comp bigger better competition and then even after that against Arkansas State they have uh still um in-state matchups against Southern and uh McNeese before they go back to a Sunbelt conference play but I think for the, the thing for this team is their heavy hitters need to hit up, keep hitting the ball. Trey Lafleur, Kyle DeBarge, Connor Higgs playing great too, like you said. Like everybody needs to keep hitting the ball, keep pitching, pitching needs to play great. And Cajuns need to stop playing from behind. I don't, I don't think they're the, the type of team to where if they get down by three or four runs, they're able to come back and beat a team. Now we've seen them do it, but consistently on a daily basis, I, I don't think they're the team that can do that like these other teams in the, in the um, NCAA baseball. But at the same time. The Cajuns can stack a lead on you. I mean, things, you know, like Kyle DeBarge hit the game winning home run. He can knock those up the park anytime. Trey LaFleur is one of the best hitters. And he's one of the top hitters in the nation. So he gets he gets a hit, brings some runs in. So the Cajuns are a great offensive team. They need to keep playing it defensively. And when they get into Sunbelt Conference play, they need to show these teams how they're they're the team to reckon with. Okay, so let's look at the, the Raging Cajun softball team here. So we've had some injury news today. Lauren Alfred and uh um she's out for the remainder of this year on a medical red shirt with an injury. Um Valdez, she, you know, got injured during the Oklahoma game, going for a pop fly behind the like kind of down the first baseline, but going toward the crowd. Looked like she hit her ankle against the and you know, MRIs came back negative. So we'll see. There's no really no word on her timetable of her return so far from what we heard from people. But uh, so, you know, you got Sophie Piscos is going to be behind the plate taking her place there. But the Cajuns have a lot of, like, depth in their lineup here. So we'll see how well they do. But, like, losing your starters is never a fun time to have anyway. So McNeese and those three games against at South Alabama – McNeese was a regional team last year. Like, we were talking about, like, like a what-if episode earlier this year. Like, what if McNeese would have actually been pulled off against Washington in the cage went at a home super regional against McNeese at Lamson Park. So, that would have been something very interesting to see here. I think Cajuns roll, though. I think they'll win these next four games here. I think they'll beat McNeese. I think they'll come out here. The biggest thing all year has been the defensive play building for the Raging Cajuns team. Now, Sam Landry's kind of had her struggles, too, who used to buzz your ace last year. So 
if she, you know, uh, she pitched better this past weekend whenever they were playing, you know, Stephen F. Austin in Central Arkansas. But look, they're they're starting, they're they're kind of turning the wheels there, and if they can just keep it up and just just you know, I get back to the fundamentals. I think they might be trying to do a little bit too much out there. You know, sometimes it's like sometimes let the fundamentals take care of business, and you'll be able to do what you got to do there. So if you look at the last four games here, the Cajuns have amassed a large number of hits with these last four games here. So they've hit double digits in every single game they played in those last four games. They went 10, then 11, 15, and then 10 again with final scores of 10 to nothing, 13 to 4, 7 to 4, and 11 to nothing. I counted those backwards. But, you know, that's just the way it is here. So I got them win next four. Jalen, what you thinking? Yeah, I think ever since the Cajuns defeated Oklahoma and ended that 70-game win streak, I think they've been on a run. I mean, beating Stephen of Austin, beating uh, Central Arkansas, and now going into this matchup with McNeese. I think they're going to roll over McNeese, not only because they're playing great right now, but I think they need to get some kind of revenge for not being able to host because of McNeese not defeating Washington, which I'm still kind of upset about going into last year, but it's fine. But I think they still roll over McNeese. And then they'll go into conference play starting off well on that great win streak going to South Alabama. And I think they'll beat South Al. They might take all three of those games. I'm going to take them, get them taking all three and keep the momentum going for the season. And yeah, like you said, like it might be injuries uh, with a few players. Injuries kind of happen, but it's kind of the next, I know you say next man, but in this case, next woman uh, stepping up to the plate. And we're going to see how this team uh, goes against some adversity. Yeah, we'll see how all that goes here once we uh go through this weekend and see how the other games go. So thank y'all for tuning in to the Fishbowl Radio. We hope a great and wonderful day. We'll see you here next time when you jump with us right here on the Fishbowl Radio.